Greetings in Jesus' name, Shannon Peacock here, also known as Shout and Shannon. Very briefly about myself, I have been involved in ministry, specifically children's ministry, since 1992. I served for 25 years in uh, Conyers, Georgia, under Dr. Jerry Patterson at Faith Tabernacle, and I now serve under Pastor Ed Walden, Restoration Apostolic Church in Athens, Georgia. I want to talk about an issue that is very important to me, and that is the issue of mental health and mental illness. It's a very important topic in itself, but it's especially important to me because I myself also deal with my own mental illness. My purpose in making this video is to inform and hopefully to inspire others to take proper action concerning their own mental health as well as the mental health of others, particularly those of us in the church and in ministry. It needs to be known that Christians and ministers alike also deal with with mental illness. Many people know that I have Tourette syndrome, which is classified as a neurological disorder, but I also have a mental illness of my own too, in fact. I have obsessive compulsive disorder, and I also have bipolar disorder. The two are not technically related, but they do often co-occur as it does in my case. I want to define the mental illnesses that I mentioned, and this is from a trusted source. Tourette syndrome, first of all, is a tick or involuntary movement disorder. Motor tics are movement. Simple motor tics include but are not limited to jerking, neck stretching, arm jerking. Complex motor tics involve multiple muscle groups or combinations of movements and are slower, often slower and more purposeful in their appearance. Vocal tics or phonic tics are sounds, audible tics. Simple tics include but are not limited to sniffing, throat clearing, grunting, uh, shouting. Complex vocal tics, and there's some misconceptions when it comes to this one. Complex vocal tics are words or phrases that are not always recognizable, but consistently occur out of context. In, now listen to this, in only about 10% of cases, the words may be inappropriate. For example, swear words, ethnic slurs, or other socially unacceptable words or phrases. This type of vocal tic is called coprolalia. It's often portrayed or mocked in the media as a common symptom of Tourette syndrome. And the profanity, the saying inappropriate things is not what Tourette syndrome is. It's only a symptom. And it's only in about 10% of people who have it. And even then, it's not always permanent. My symptoms of Tourette syndrome are neck jerking, uh, my, my hands twitch, that kind of thing. Uh, sometimes some grunting, I'll, I'll, I'll snap my jaw, snap my teeth, that kind of thing. And there are other occasions when it, it comes in a, a bout, a cluster of tics that it can be almost like having a seizure. I have to lay down and just let it pass. I can sometimes, and most people with Tourette's can, kind of withhold or suppress the tics for a little while, just like you can stop yourself from blinking for a little while, but eventually you have to let it happen. I don't make it happen, but I can you know, allow that to happen. And if I try to suppress it too long, it, it really uh, builds up, and, uh, and on occasions it can be uh, a bit debilitating. And then there's obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD. Again, a lot of misconceptions about this one as well. And again, this is from a trusted source. OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, is an anxiety disorder in which people have recurring and usually unwanted thoughts, ideas, or sensations. Those are called obsessions that make them feel driven to do something repetitively. That's the compulsion. The action they take is the compulsion. The repetitive behaviors can be things like hand washing, even to the point of, of skin damage, uh, checking on things, excessive cleaning, uh, and these things can significantly interfere with a person's daily activities and social interactions. Now, my symptoms, I, growing up, one of my symptoms was that I would explain myself concerning something, a, a, a point I was trying to make, and I would explain it, and I would re-explain it, and if someone interrupted me while I was giving this explanation, I would start back over from the beginning and start again, and you can imagine how insanely frustrated people got with me. It drove my, uh, my family nuts sometimes, and, you know, we didn't really understand what was happening at the time. It was just, you know, that's Janet's personality. He's just, he's just annoying. He just has to say what he has to say, and it was, um, it was very difficult to live with. One of the ones that I have uh, now is checking the time on my phone when I go to bed, and I'm aware. I, I know it's, it's, 
that I look at the time once and I know what time it is. I look at the time. I'm going to bed. It's 11.33 p.m. 11.33 p.m. Phone's on mute. It's on mute. 11.33 p.m. And I keep doing that a little bit. I turn I click it, turn it off, and then uh, turn it back on because I still have that obsession and go and make sure I know the time. And then finally, sometime, it can take anywhere from 30 seconds to, to two minutes for me to check the time on my phone. And I am aware that it's... Um, that, it, that I know the time, I'm aware of what's going on, but I still just feel that uh, need to do that, and I, and I will do that until I you know, get the, you know, the satisfaction of, of checking the time, and if I don't, it can cause, it can cause a lot of anxiety for me, like it does uh, obsessions uh, do with other people who have OCD. Now, here's what OCD is not. A lot of people say, I'm a neat freak, or I have to have things just a certain way, and, and I want to put all the dishes away a certain way. That's, that's not necessarily OCD. You know, if you wanted to, let's say you set the table in a certain way and you're very particular about it, you know, setting it everything just right, make sure it's lined up nice and neat, that may not necessarily be obsessive compulsive disorder. That may be just a personality quirk. Obsessive compulsive disorder, for example, would be when you move the things, the silverware right into alignment and it's not quite right, so you pull it out and push it back together again, turn the tables and uh, the, the plates, and then you get everything just right and you're, you're still not quite sure, and then... Okay, and then you walk away and maybe you're still not satisfied and you come back and do it again. That would be more typical to uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. And lastly, bipolar disorder. And lastly, bipolar disorder. Again, from a trusted source, this is... From a trusted source, this is... Okay. Bipolar disorder can cause dramatic mood swings. During a manic episode, people with bipolar disorder may feel high and on top of the world or uncomfortably irritable and revved up. They may even have delusions of grandeur, like they think they're going to be rich soon and you just can't talk them down from it. During a depressive episode, they may feel sad and hopeless, and we'll talk a little bit more about depression soon. They, there are often periods of normal moods between these episodes. Symptoms of mental illness, and this is any mental illness, symptoms of mental illness are not always, um, not always constant. My manic symptoms, this is the, the, the mood, the upper mood swings when I'm feeling, you know, really up there, really high and really raised. With me, sometimes I have these ideas, things that I want to do, things that I'm going to do, and it's going to be huge, and it's going to be big, and it's going to be awesome, and, and nobody can talk me down from it, not even my wife. And she's learned over the years to just, you know, just, just smile and nod, just smile and nod, just kind of let me, you know, go on and, and do what it is is I'm trying to do. And of course, a lot of those ideas uh, turn out to be absolute flops. I've had great ideas over the years, things that I've done and developed and things I've done in children's ministry, but I'll, most of them are just me being right up there and racing and I have to learn to accept that, you know, I wasn't necessarily inspired. I was just, I was just on that racing manic mood swing. I'm also often very, very absent minded. I'll have a conversation with my wife and if I'm, if my thoughts are particularly racing or I'm a little bit, a little bit manic, my wife can say something to me and a couple hours later, I'll say something and she'll tell me, we just talked about that. Don't you remember? And I have no recollection whatsoever of the conversation. And those who know me well uh, know exactly what I'm talking about. With bipolar disorder, there's often an impaired sense of what is appropriate. And sometimes I, you know, I've been known to say something, not, not anything dirty or anything like that, but say something that could be offensive or really irritating. And, it, and, and later on, I thought, what, what possessed me to, to say that? My mind was racing and some thought happened and it just, just falls out of my mouth before I think about it. Now, I'm responsible for whatever I say, whatever symptoms, whatever symptoms I have or uh, whatever. But, you know, sometimes it, it does get uh, the better of me. And also during those uh, high manic times, I can experience high levels of anxiety where the energy is just flowing and, I, and, and sometimes I just kind of clench my, my fist and my hands and I just, just want to get this, this hyper feeling, this manic feeling out, out of me. And, uh, and, and sometimes people can see that, that, I'm, that I'm stressed about these things. And so, you know, I've learned to just, there are times I just kind of need to get away and be by myself. And that goes with uh, some of my other symptoms as well. And then there is my depression symptoms. Now, this is something that, um, you know, people may not joke about as much. My grandmother always said, you know, you, you got to laugh. With, with Tourette's syndrome, yeah, I hate it sometimes. And, 
But, you know, I, I've kind of learned a joke about it sometimes. I told someone, hey, let's play musical ticks. Whenever I jump, you know, everybody sits down. Or, you know, it's a good thing I'm Pentecostal because if it happens in church, I could just be like, mm, thank you, Jesus. Mm, glory, you know, something like that. But depression is, is not something that people, you know, joke about as much. And, you know, rightly, rightly so. I, I think there's humor to be found in absolutely anything. But with depression, and I'll describe my, my, my symptoms, is that there, first of all, is a complete lack of motivation. I don't want to do anything. I, I'm, I'm, I've got so many projects, ministry projects and materials that I can be working on at any given time, but sometimes I just look at the computer and think, I just, I wish I could do it, but I just, I just can't. If I walk toward the computer, I just feel, I just feel even worse, and it's very hard to get past that. And there are even occasions where I, you know, I don't even want to go to church. Now, I hope that doesn't upset or offend anyone. I always do go to church because I have learned, you know, that that's what we need. That's certainly what I need for my life, uh, you know, as a, as a minister or a Christian or whatever. I, I always made sure that I did get to the house of God and kept myself accountable to that. But I can have a complete lack of motivation. I can also be very, very irritable. Um, I also sleep a lot whenever I'm depressed. Sometimes I'll be depressed for a day, sometimes a couple days, sometimes it's kind of in and out for a few days. And there are times where I may be depressed for an extended period of time, for a week or weeks, and it's just all day long and it's constant. And and I, you know, I may sleep for 10 to 12 hours uh, a day. When it comes to researching mental illness, I encourage you to not use the internet as your resource. There are trusted resources on the internet, but the best way to find out about a mental illness is to call your local mental health professional and ask them if they have pamphlets or printed materials. Sometimes they'll even take a, a counselor or a psychologist, they'll even take a few minutes to talk to you uh, without an appointment. Just, you know, when you walk in there, you wait for them, maybe they'll have a few minutes to talk to you. And, and maybe answer a couple of questions over a few minutes. But if you want to find out more about mental illness, that's really the best way to do it is to contact your, uh, your local health professional. So this has been part one of a two-part video series. Make sure you watch the next one, all of it, because I will be talking about how my mental illness has affected my life and the lives of those around me and how we as the church must get it right when it comes to dealing with our own mental illness or the mental illness of those around us. So make sure you check the next one out. Lord bless.